So good morning and welcome. Okay. Today, um, Father Dubino um, is unable to join us, um, but he has asked me to facilitate this gathering of the parishes in Deanery 10 from Brooklyn. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning. So, Good morning, everyone. We have a Roseanne from St. Dominic's here today, and hopefully a few other people will join in. I hope uh, so. Mm -hmm. um, not to put anyone on the spot, but would any of my colleagues like to say the opening prayer today? Sure, uh, I can do it, Nelson. Thank you, Joan. So let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for your great mercy and compassion. We thank you for this new day of your creation, and we ask your blessing upon uh, this meeting, upon all the work that we have to do uh, during this week. And we also thank you um, for the gift of the life of St. Juan Diego, whose feast day is today. And so we... Um, we commend ourselves to the intercession of Blessed Mary of Reversion, um, uniting our prayers to her and to St. Joseph in this year of St. Joseph. And so we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Juan Diego, pray for us. St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, Thank pray for us. Thank you, Joanne, for that. And um, it's incredible how we're almost in the middle of December. <laughs> it's crazy. So um, welcome to everyone. We're holding these meetings to more than anything to be a support for all our directors and coordinators of religious education in the parishes and also to give you some updates of things that we're working on here in, in the Secretariat for Evangelization and Catechesis. So um, I'd like to um, start by giving in, um, some updates. Um, Christian, would you like to fill us in on what's happening in your ministry area? Sure. Uh, thank you, Nelsa. So uh, just to um, to bring about that, we on our YouTube channel, we have our um, family catechesis uh, training through RCL Benzinger and Loyola Press. So you know that um, Bishop has mandated that um, every parish that has a religious ed program is supposed to use either um, RCL Benzinger's Family Life program, grades five through eight, or they can use Loyola Press's Growing with God. And okay, um, and with um, with those two programs, uh, they all have a, a digital component that can be adapted into uh, remote learning. So in these uh, training sessions, which are on our YouTube channel, which I'm going to put in the chat so you can uh, see it for, for yourselves, we have one training session um, by Loyola, by um, RCL Benzinger, and then we have two training sessions from Loyola Press, and you can see it on our uh, on our channel. You just simply have to look uh, look them up. So that's that's the first thing. Uh, the other is that we just um, last week we launched our Advent um, virtual reflection, and as of today we have about a, 750 views um, all around uh, the uh, the country, actually the world, because uh, we have at least 668 that were just in the United States. So that, so it's really, really good. Uh, we've we've never done anything like this uh, with regards to an Advent reflection. So um, this is actually very encouraging. Uh, so I ask you um, if you do have the time to please share the information of where uh, to watch the uh, Advent reflection 
and uh, to participate in uh, um, in the reflections as well. There's mass, there's homilies in different languages. We have presentations, and then we also have a, a multilingual rosary holy hour. So it's uh, it really shows the dynamic of the church, uh, especially in the diocese. Um, how we're there's so many different cultures, so many different groups of people gather together and um, preparing for uh, um, for Christmas. So um, as I've mentioned before, um, we do have a YouTube channel that I am asking all the DREs and catechists to subscribe to. Um, so when you go to the channel, just click on the subscribe button, but also to click on the bell to get all the notifications when we put up a new video or a new training or or have you like that. So you have everything there um, as soon as uh, we release something or premiere something. Uh, the other thing too is that we have a new Facebook page and I'm going to put the link in the chat as well. Uh, please uh, do like the page um, and so you can get notifications uh, on that as well. And um, I don't know is uh, if Lucia's in, um, in. No, she's not at this meeting, so I'll just mention that uh, there we uh, we just had a uh, diocesan youth day um, that was all virtual as well. And um, if you if you can share that with your youth and young adults, I'll put that also um, in the chat as well. So uh, thank you so much, Nelsa. Thank you, Christian. Joanne, would you like to give us some updates from your area of ministry, please? Sure. Uh, so good morning again. Um, it's great to have you here. Um, so uh, we have wrapped up uh, with our semester with the Holy Spirit Institute. So things are going well there, thanks be to God. It's been a challenge for everyone to do things virtually, but people are getting slowly more used to it. Um, we are accepting new applications. And so anyone who's interested in the Holy Spirit Institute um, for the new year, classes would begin in September of the following year. So September, 2021. You can go to BQ online and you'll see the icon for the Holy Spirit Institute and they can choose uh, either English or Spanish the application online and just fill it all out. Um, and then we'll be more than happy to contact them and help them uh, in their discernment. Um, right now uh, we are looking at um, hoping to have uh, the right of election, <clears throat> um, which would be that first Sunday in Lent. Um, we're on a day to day basis in the office, so we just uh, are doing the best that we can. Normally I would have sent out all the forms already, um, but they might not go out until next week. And really what we're looking for is those people who have already completed um, eight liturgical, you know, seasons. So as you know, Bishop DiMarzio um, has always wanted us to make sure that people are having one full liturgical year. Um, and we're speaking about people who are not baptized, so they're receiving all three um, sacraments. Uh, so if they have not been in that process for the entire year, then they really shouldn't be on the form to be entering into for the right of election. Um, different parishes do different things. Um, and I've always said it's a discernment process. So if you have someone who has always been going to mass on Sunday and just never got around to becoming Catholic, different, you know what I mean? But we're, we're asking that those people who really had absolutely no knowledge of the faith, nothing, they came, you know, just seeking um, to become Catholic and never knew anything about Christ prior to that, that they, they should go through the whole liturgical year. Um, one full year, so from Advent to Advent, and then after that second Advent, they would enter into, you know, the, they would come to the right of election. Um, so more information is forthcoming. As you know, we our numbers are rising, our percentages are rising in New York. Um, so we want to be prudent, but at the same time, uh, we're just going to try and see what happens. So if you receive a form or if your RCA coordinator receives a form, uh, from me um, electronically as we're using Microsoft Forms, um, please encourage them to fill it out and get it back to me as soon as possible so that we can determine where 
um, the location will be. We hope to have one in Brooklyn and one in Queens. If we need to increase that, I need to know based on the forms that are filled out. If we don't, then we'll just strictly have the right of election, one in Brooklyn, one in Queens. Um, it will only be the catechumen and and um, and perhaps uh, the coordinator, but no one else. We have to change that this year. Um, so we have to have as, as little a minimal amount of people as possible um, so that we can keep to the state's uh, protocols and, and regulations, but also to keep everyone safe. So at the same time, we want to offer this beautiful celebration for them to be presented to uh, Bishop DiMarzio and or any of the auxiliary bishops. But at the same time, we have to be careful with all that and follow all the protocols that we need to follow and keep everyone safe. So more information will be forthcoming. It'll probably be, you know, at the cusp. You know what I mean? Like we may tell you next week here, fill out the forms. And then in January, we may tell you everything is pushed back. So with all things and just asking for patience and for prayers, let us pray that this pandemic ends soon. Um, let's pray that the people who need the vaccines will get the vaccines and that we can uh, potentially return slowly to um, a normal way of doing things. So that's what I have for that. Um, just again, as we always say here, um, we just thank you for the work that you're doing. Know that you're in our continued prayers. Um, we're always available to come and reach out to you and to help you. Um, and the staff here uh, just thanks you for all the work that you're doing. Um, so thank you very much. If you have any questions or uh, concerns, you can contact us directly. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. Um, if you could just um, talk about getting credit from Living and Leading by Faith for um, anyone that watches the Advent Reflection. I don't think that was discussed. Sure, sure. Uh, Nelsa, thank you. Um, so when you go to watch the Advent Reflection on YouTube, um, there is that little drop down arrow and um, you'll see there the link to fill out uh, the, the survey that we have there. Um, there are required questions and then there's some that would not be applicable to you. So, for example, if you didn't listen to something in a, in a language other than English because English is your only language, then you can put NA to those other questions because they don't apply. They're not applicable to you. Um, but uh, yes, answer the questions that are applicable. Um, we encourage you to have this beautiful um, spiritual experience and then we're more than happy then, excuse me, to give uh, credit for for um, for watching and participating virtually in the Advent Reflection. Uh, we also encourage you to give us your um, suggestions for the Lenten Reflection and any other future virtual events uh, that we uh, are going to hopefully put on soon. Um, so anything that you could help us with that would be helpful to you uh, would be great for us. Um, we can't honor everything, but we take all your suggestions into great consideration. So thank you very much. Thank you, Joanne. Um, Christine, do you have any updates about the iPads, please? Uh, the iPads have started to be distributed to parishes. Many parishes have already received them. As I get updates, I update the parishes as to, you know, if something is missing or if the devices are en route. Um, I would appreciate an email just letting me know you received them if you did. Uh, again, we're waiting on subscriptions. If you are sure that all of your catechists have subscribed or if you did it yourself and they still have not been received their devices, send me an email so that I can follow up with the sales. Um, patience is needed because there is a very, very large um, request for devices, not only from the state of New York or the sales, but across the country, schools are needing them. And unfortunately, our power schools are kind of falling in, uh, falling in between the cracks and we're getting them in a much slower rate than we would have liked. 
only the devices for parishes that had signed up in June are being honored at this moment. If you were on a wait list and were approved by Father Joe at the time of, say, August, September, you're good. If you find out now that you need devices, I could put you on a wait list, but there is no guarantee that you will be able to get those devices. And any parish that has decided not to have a parish program is not eligible for the devices. Any DRE pastor or deacon is not eligible for devices. Those were given in a previous grant um, for the pastors and the DREs. The deacons were not included in a grant, but we are working to try to get deacons approved for a grant in the future if possible. Um, right now, because of the demand in laptops and iPads, it's they're slowly being made, so they're slowly coming <laughs> coming to us, which means it's going to slowly get to you. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I've been handling everybody on a one on one basis. I think it's easier that way. So if you have a concern or a question or, you know, need an update, you can email me. If you know that your catechists have not paid for the subscriptions, there is nothing I can do until that part of the agreement is made. But once the subscriptions are done, if they know that, oh, they're getting their tablet delivered at home and they still don't have the, the iPad, then yes, email me so that I can find out why the iPad hasn't been released if the subscription is being fulfilled. That's it. Thank you, Christine. I have a few um, reminders, updates. One is if you um, haven't completed the current catechist report, which is found on the diocesan portal, please do so. A handful of people haven't complied with that yet, and it was due at the end of October. So please, please, please complete that as soon as possible. The bishop requires that information and the Office of Safe Environments uh, we need to um, ensure that all people, volunteers, catechists, working with children, even remotely, have been vetted through the Vir um, Virtus training program. So please comply with that. And I'd like you to, re to remind you that also the Child Lures presentation should be offered to the children and teens virtually. And that report, the compliance report, is due at the end of February. Um, this Friday, December 11th, there will be a joint meeting on Teams with Father Jubino and Dr. Tom Chadzutko, the superintendent of schools. Um, all of you, all catechetical leaders, should have received the Teams invite a couple of weeks ago, I believe it was. And um, so please be sure to tune in, to join in this meeting, which will have to do with um, how is it that we can um, better collaborate between the school's department and the um, catechetical leaders, all of us working together towards helping children encounter our Lord Jesus Christ. So this would be a very important meeting to attend. Um, also, keep on your radar, save the date, March 9th, 2021. More info to come. Uh, Sadlier, who has always been uh, supportive of the diocese, will be offering a webinar um, specifically on how to help, how to be a witness and how to help children encounter Christ. So that's uh, something exciting to look forward to. Um, okay, I think I covered everything. So now, um, Roseanne, are you still there? Because yeah. we'd like to know how things are going from your perspective. Like, what are the high points? Can you share any good news with us? Um with the school, everything is going very well with the school, I must say. Um, the children when you say are school, excuse me, when you say school, you mean your religious? The religious, okay. yeah, the CCD. Um, the children, what I've noticed with the Zooming, the children are very focused 
and they're doing very well because there's no distractions. Um, the catechists are great, and uh, you know we're 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 doing what we can with them, but we're doing very well. The catechist is doing extremely well, uh, better than I even thought. That's what's going on with us, and uh, we're consistent. I don't have any days off with them at all because I feel they need us and we need them too. You know, it's, it's good for the catechists to be in touch with the children every week. And, and that, that's about it. That's they're doing fine. Do you find that parents are participating with the children? Are they um, involved? Yes. And this is what I like too. The parent, we're engaging the parents which we really weren't doing that when they were in the classroom. And uh, I also, when I ordered books this year, I got bilingual books. This way, especially with the younger children, the first and second grade, now that we're Zooming, the, the parents can help them because this, the Spanish parents, they do speak English, but it, the reading's a little difficult for them. And uh, this way, they can read it and then explain to the children and talk to the children about the lesson. And that's working out really nice. Okay, that's wonderful. Do you have yeah. children in the upper grades, perhaps um, preparing for confirmation? Are they also able to um, be more focused and participate through Zoom? Yes, in fact, they are turning in work. They're actually turning in work. When they were in the classroom, it was so difficult to get them to do a lot of things. You know, they, I think there was just too many distractions in a classroom. And, you know, amongst themselves, talking, whatever, even though we, you know, they shouldn't be, but they're older teenagers. And they're turning in their assignments, every single one of them. Mm -hmm. They're there every week. That's great. Uh, the only, yeah, the only thing we noticed with the older children they're turning off their videos, some of them. And we can't tell them, no, we want it all. We want to see you, you know. Mm -hmm. And so they, they, it, we're getting through to them. You know what it is? They've been getting uh, mis mixed signals because the public schools let them turn the video off. Mm -hmm. So we had to get through to them. No, we're not the public school. We want it on. We want to see you. Mm -hmm. So that So that's working out a lot better now. But they're teenagers. This is what right. they do. I this, was wondering if that was going to be the case because other catechists, other DREs have said how that's a challenge getting the older kids put on the video. But in yeah. previous meetings, um, a few people have suggested that by letting them turn turn on the video at the beginning of the gathering and then at the end, at least, so that yeah. the catechist knows while well, the person is still there. As long yeah. as he or she is participating, because it is part of their developmental stage. They feel so yeah. self-conscious. So, um, you know, but those are some ideas that were thrown out. Yeah. Uh, it, it, they're coming along. They're, they're, for the most part, they're, they all have it on now. Mm -hmm. We finally got through to them. Um, and what I also noticed, see, they have my phone number, too. And the parents call me a lot. Just to, sometimes just to talk, nothing, you know, just how's everything going. And it's interesting. I'm finding this very interesting. And some of the children, the older children, sometimes call from time to time if they need help with something, you know, an assignment, I'll help them. And, um, yeah, and my teachers, too, they'll call and the older ones and they'll help them, too, the catechists. So that that's good. Okay, yes, just make sure if a student calls you or the catechist that the parent is on the phone or is aware yeah. because we have to be very careful with the safe environment protocol. We don't want to uh, um, do anything that might be seen, seen yeah, as improper. You're absolutely right. And what I do is I ask if uh, their mother is there and I do talk to the mother. 
Okay, good. And good. a couple of occasions that had happened, not all the time, you know, mm -hmm. but I did speak to the mother and I'd say, oh, your son just called he, or the, your daughter called. She needs help with this, that. And, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll put them back on. So they know. Good, good. You know, That's I'm excellent. Very cool with that. Yes. And during I, this time, I think that it has allowed um, all of us catechetical leaders to minister more closely to the parents. Um, which is the ideal scenario, but time is always, you know, a limit, limited, or they, parents themselves, don't make themselves available. But I'm hearing um, from all of you that now you're able to be in touch more with parents, speak to them, and that's a, a very important aspect of the catechetical ministry, supporting parents and um, the families so thank you so much that you, you know for doing that it's very important they, and they all have every single parent has my phone number my my both numbers my home number and my cell number so That's i can be available anytime i will never let a parent wait mm -hmm. for a call back and I, I always tell them if they're waiting it's only because i'm driving and i won't answer the phone <laughs> otherwise sure, sure. Right yeah, I'm that's wonderful, nervous. Roseanne. Yeah. yeah, it's very important that we minister yeah. to yeah. the whole family, especially now. A lot of families are are don't feel safe to go to mass, or they have, um, you know, physical conditions that impede them from assisting, you know, in person yeah. at mass. So, those that contact that you have with them is really important and it's not just you but you are representing the church yeah and it means a lot sometimes sometimes i i offer also to go to them if they want communion because i'm also i can also you know i'm also a minister and i can go to their house and give it to them and it just make it more, everything more available to them Okay. You know, I, I really do my best. I go on deliveries every Monday. Mm -hmm. If they That's need to walk, if they need something, instead of them coming out to the rectory, you know, mm -hmm. in my office to pick something up, I'll go and drop it off at their house. You mm -hmm. know, I do things like that to make it easier for them because they're afraid. Mm -hmm. they're sure. Afraid. I, I just want to um, refer to something you said regarding taking communion. Um, mm -hmm. I would recommend that you speak to your pastor about that because I don't believe that the, from the diocese that no, has been approved yet to go on home to. visits to take Holy Communion. Right. And, you, and we're being to. very, very careful here in our diocese to make sure yeah. that everybody keeps safe. Oh, yeah. Know, so please so make sure that you're following the guidelines. He doesn't want us doing that, but I... I don't know, Nilsa. I really try and help people. I, they're so frightened. I, I, you must hear it too. I mean, there are children that haven't been out since March. Yeah, and it's, and it's difficult. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, know that we are all praying for for you as a catechetical leader and all catechetical leaders for their families. For our priests especially, I know that many priests have gotten sick with COVID. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I know that, well, I think I speak for all of us. We're all very concerned about everyone who's out there and, and in ministering closely to our faithful here in the diocese and praying that no one gets sick and that, you know, we get through this soon, that we get those... Uh, uh, vaccines in the hands of the, you know, the doctors to to keep them safe and those that are more at risk can be vaccinated as soon as possible and that we can get through this difficult time with more faith, hopefully with more faith that, that God is here with us even during this difficult time. It's not easy for anybody. I, I know I speak for everybody here. We are all going through our own challenges. Mm -hmm. We put up a strong front, you know, to try to help others, but all of us are being affected in one way or another. So 
like Joanne said before, you know, pray for us too. And we certainly are praying for all of you, for, for everyone in the whole world, I guess, because we're all connected because we're all God's creation. Yes. Would anyone else um, have anything else to share or comment on before we bring the meeting to a close? Um, thank you. Oh, Joanne, please. I was just going to say thank you. Thank you again. Um, and, and we know it's been an overwhelming time. So um, uh, we just hang in there, right? And we keep trying to uh, maintain hope in the season of hope, um, of peace, of joy, um, as we make it to Christmas and praying that they don't shut us down uh, before Christmas Day so that we can actually go to Mass and, and celebrate this beautiful season that we're in. Um, so thank you. Thank you for giving people hope uh, in the way that you're doing it. <clears throat> you know, we all, everything that we do in little ways um, to help people. So many people are suffering from different things and in different ways, not just from this virus. So thank you very much for sharing. Yes, Roseanne, thank you. And know that we're, we are all here. The Secretariat, the entire staff is here to help you and all DREs in any way that we can. Um, feel free to call me as you have and other people have just to share. It's just like those parents reach out to you because they need to talk to someone. We're here for you too. We care about all, all our leaders and catechists. So... I think that maybe this, you know, there's so many silver linings in all of this. And I personally feel that I'm able to meet, to get to know all of you much better in a more personal way. And that's definitely beautiful and a much needed thing in ministry. So thank you all that reach out to me and um, to all of us here in this secretariat. God bless you. Continue with that beautiful smile and um, bringing message of hope and courage and guiding your catechist through this difficult time. So God bless everyone, my colleagues, I miss you. And um, God bless you and 